Hey everybody, nice to see you all today. I'm Jacob Roos and I'm here to talk about a very important subject, a topic that was vital to our ancestors and in society today. Yes, I will be talking about the amazing outer cultural miracle we all know and love, corn. Now, you may be thinking, what is this person gonna tell me about corn that I don't already know? You eat corn on the cob, you eat popcorn, you eat corn syrup, you buy corn from farmers, etc. You are technically correct. That is corn in a nutshell. Now, the main purpose of me talking to you about corn is the industry. The corn industry is entirely focused on the bottom line, outsourcing their costs to the environment and their consumers. This mainly relating to the way the industry produces said corn. Now, I'm not saying down with corn itself. I'm saying down with the business model of the corn industry. <clears throat> there are major negative impacts to our environments and our health from us consuming the final products of corn. But you probably don't know how big this business is. You and I helped support and create this monster known as the corn industry. And I helped support this monster. Here's a little backstory on why I have this vendetta and why it's so crucial for me to tell you about it. When I was young, I grew up in Hawaii. Usually I saved up my money, I got from holidays, birthdays, etc., and bought a video game for the console I had at the time. Then I got a taste of soda. Yes, the sugary, carbonated, high fructose syrupy drink soda. It changed my life. I got hooked. Every chance to buy a soda, I took. Whenever I wasn't drinking a soda, I thought about the next time I could get a soda. So much of my money went to this industry because I got caught in this cycle. And do you know why I'm telling you this? Because I was eventually able to control it. Not stop it, but control it. In my case, high fructose corn syrup. This is what the corn industries are trying to do. Drag you through the mud while filling their pocketbooks. In my case, it's high fructose corn syrup. It, however, is vital to understand the history of corn before the big industry. Ergo, the history of corn. Zaya maize, also known as Indian corn, or maize, is a grass that was originally discovered in America and was domesticated by people in Mexico roughly 10,000 years ago. Thousands of years passed by with a lot of human interaction and cross-pollination with corn and other plants. The parent species of modern corn is the Mexican grass teosinte. This teosinte is the basis for selective breeding, cross-pollination, and other techniques that create the plant we know as corn today. And this is a representation of what it looks like. On the bottom, you have teosinte, and on top, you have Zaya maize. Zaya maize was bred to yield far more edible food and requires far less work to obtain it. Also, the kernel holding the Zaya maize is much easier to remove. For Tio Sinte, you have to chip away the shell and you can't easily shuck it. But I digress once again. Back to the history of corn. After the cross-pollination of different varieties of grasses and plants, the 1600s came around and the first European settlers came to America. Multiple resources were shared between the continents, mainly disease, and most importantly, corn. It began to spread outside the Americas and throughout the world at this time, the optimal growing regions being between 58 degrees north latitude to 40 degrees south latitude. However, there is not only just one type of corn. When the grass was first discovered, there were eight known varieties, and now, there are about 200. The commercial classifications are based on kernel texture. The following types are dent corn, flint corn, flower corn, sweet corn, and popcorn. Now, the vital part of my talk, corn statistics. The United States alone produced 371 million metric tons of corn in 2017 to 2018. Also raising that number is from the 1980s, from when seed companies started genetically modifying corn to have desirable traits, including resistance to specific herbicides and increased drought tolerance. 
corn that is not genetically modified still exists. It's just way less common and it's hard to come by. Whereas roughly half of corn is used to feed livestock, the other major usage of corn is corn syrup. There, however, is a major problem with corn syrup. It's not efficient at all compared to other sugars. Corn crops on average require 20 to 25 inches of water to grow. In comparison to a sugar beet, it takes 22 to 28 inches of water to grow. Whereas it takes about six kilograms of sugar beets to produce one kilogram of raw sugar, it takes 2.3 kilograms of corn to produce one kilogram of corn syrup. Now, you may think this means I'm completely incorrect. Corn is amazing. It may look that way, but uh, another vital material for growing is fertilizer. For corn and sugar beets, they have similar needs in nutrients. The main requirements are nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. For sugar beets, it requires an average of 20 pounds per acre. For corn, it's 100. Now, economically, it still is viable to farm corn, but environmentally, it's lacking for this industry to do so. Now, why is corn syrup seen as so bad? Corn syrup, or more often known as high fructose corn syrup, in most cases high fructose corn syrup, is less expensive than its sucrose counterpart, which is most commonly referred to as sugar. Now, to prevent any confusion, let me explain the difference between corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup. Regular syrup is just glucose from cornstarch, a simple sugar. In high fructose corn syrup, some of the glucose is turned into fructose by using enzymes known as globular proteins to create a chemical reaction to make said fructose. Now, you most likely know that sugar is essential to any diet in moderation. Glucose and sucrose, they easily move around your body, giving you energy. Fructose, on the other hand, needs to be turned into fat or stored carbohydrates, also known as glycogen, by the liver before it can be used by the body. The liver can do this function actually quite easily, but the problem arises if you consume copious amounts of fructose. In a regular diet, eating fruits and vegetables and other products without added sugars, a human body can easily process what it intakes in most cases. However, with copious consumption of fructose and glucose comes along copious health effects. The most prevalent of those being diabetes. And with diabetes, comes extra health effects, and so on and so forth. Heart disease, blood sugar levels, obesity, yada, yada, yada. In conclusion, if you're gonna be a consumer in the corn industry, it is to your benefit to know that the corn industry isn't built to be friendly towards the environment. The reason we keep consuming the corn products, however, is the sheer quantity of the corn industry to do so many products using some sort of corn in the production line, mainly livestock. The corn industry has a large amount of influence on the food markets. In the end, I'm not saying that corn itself is bad. I'm saying the way that the corn industry runs itself is bad. Bad for you and bad for the environment. Thank you.